welcome everyone to episode 37 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and this week we're going to go down memory lane and talk about conventions with uh, one of my friends from Galactic Battleground, Kelly Pangburn. How you doing, Kelly? Good. Thank you for having me back. Great to be here. Yeah, I just I've just been really kind of strolling down memory lane lately with the game and where we've gone with it and just waiting for conventions to come back. But before we jump into all that stuff, if you guys like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to subscribe, follow on whatever social media you're on. Um, if you're liking the YouTube channel, subscribe there. If you're liking the podcast, follow and uh, let us know what you think of the show. So let's just jump into conventions. So we've gone to a handful of conventions over the years. Um, a good chunk in the Midwest. We've gone down to Vegas. We've You went out to California for California Extreme, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, and then I've gone to tournaments in florida and bumble bash and all that stuff but i want to focus primarily on midwest conventions because i feel like they don't get the kind of love that the big ones do Mm -hmm. um and kind of where it took us with galactic battleground the the timeline with that so you went to the first one which you showed off galactic battleground before really it even was considered to go into a cabinet and that was on the apple tv in 2016 just Tell me a little bit about 2DCon in 2016 and what you remember from that weekend. Uh, 2016, 2DCon um, was in a hotel in Ian Prairie. Uh, we were, uh, you know, we we were basically working on our game that we didn't even know what we were going to do with it yet. We were just, it was just basically a demo that we were trying to uh show off and and get some exposure and we saw this uh you know 2d con advertised i think i was on facebook or something like that and uh, i just reached out uh and said hey you know we we've got this game and um uh you know wondering if uh i i, I never was at 2d con ever uh and uh um so i reached out and shauna replied and uh shouts out to her she was very accommodating to uh helping us out she wants to you know encourage the indie games as much as possible they have an indie island uh specifically now in, the, in their more recent iterations of the conference and um at the time there was only a, uh there was a, there was still an indie island but there wasn't as many and uh, we were kind of a last second entry uh into it so we just ended up kind of on the outside of the edge of the uh conference but still like a high traffic area um and uh it was a great experience because we 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 were just mainly there for feedback on our game because we literally you know it was basically super alpha beta stage and stuff like that and you know it just had it it had uh just two players at the time and uh we just wanted to see if anybody even liked the game you know kind of thing and uh we, we we got our feedback in spades basically like uh so many people stopped by and they you know our game is very similar to uh you know galaga of course and or it's definitely inspired by Galaga, and uh, a lot of people did the rubberneck as they walked by. It's like kind of couldn't help, couldn't help but look away, and a lot of them, you know, did a ninety degree turn and came and say, "What is this?" You know, kind of thing. You know, um, and that's you know, this is is just on a you know a thirty seven inch TV and, and stuff like that, and a lot of open minds, a lot of great uh, you know people were, uh, attended the conference that are willing to you know try new things and 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 check it out and um they had it was it you could tell um uh, you know we've been, we've been there over the years uh uh we went uh, we went there in 2018 and 2019 and and how they've grown uh from that and i don't i don't remember how many years they've been in it but um you know they definitely have probably have doubled in size since that first weekend and that first weekend w- was was nuts uh when we were there the nintendo showed up they have, they set up an entire booth uh which was probably you know a sign that you are you know moving in the right direction as far as your conference goes um uh they had a lot of arcade games uh scattered throughout uh they didn't have like uh it wasn't really like an arcade central like they've done more recently but they just they had like arcade games like placed around there and it was very kind of a unique setup and then a lot of different vendors uh selling merchandise and then a lot of uh there was a handful of indie arcade developers and uh, it was just basically, and then they had also had the competitions and stuff like that. And they had, I remember the, 
I remember the first, the, the, the Saturday night is kind of their big nights and uh, they had a band in there and it was, uh, uh, it was one of the one of the few conventions I've ever been to that actually has a scheduled concert uh, for people to go to, which I think is really cool too. Um, they've kept that kind of concert tradition through uh, over the years as well, and uh, you know it's a one night only kind of thing. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, and 2018 was the second year that Collect Battleground was there, and neither of us ended up going that year, but. Um it ended up being kind of crazy because our guys Dylan and Miles took the game there. Um, they brought it there in the morning, had it there for a couple hours, had a whole bunch of people playing, were running tournaments and everything. And then they packed it back up on the U-Haul to take it to the Deadbeats concert, um, which was at the Armory, I believe. Um, yep. I think that one's in Minneapolis, right? Yep. Yeah, like downtown. Um, so like they drove it 20 miles uh, to this, 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 one night only type of a music festival. Yeah. in the, in the back of the U-Haul and they had a, a whole arcade cause it kind of went with the theme of the deadbeats. Um, and they just, they said it was just an absolute blast to get it there. And then they drove it back to 2D con at like three o'clock in the morning after the show was over. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was just, that was really cool that they were able to do that is just kind of a, a wild thing. Um, unfortunately we weren't able to be there in 2018 to actually see how the convention changed. Um, Mm -hmm. but then you did go, uh, we all went to 2019 and you saw the big difference, which is, I mean, that's a three year gap in the convention. Yeah. And from the way you had described it to me, um, I thought it was a fairly small convention. And then we went in 2019 and it, it felt like a pretty, pretty big thing. Like they had a, a full arcade with, I mean, it, there had to be close to 100 games in there. And then yeah. a bunch of tables for tabletop games. It, it was kind of like the all-around convention. They had cosplays, they had music, they had board games, they had um, like a whole fighting game room where people were playing like Street Fighter tournaments and King of Fighters and all that stuff. And it was just a really cool atmosphere to show off the game. And we were able to bring two cabinets this time and the cocktail. So that was, I think, one of the first times we showed off the cocktail. But yep, we had two two player cocktail. That's right. Yeah, it was just it was really cool to show it off like in our backyard. And yeah, I always absolutely. enjoy going to two D Con. Yeah, two D Con is basically the largest uh, video game uh, event in the in Minnesota and pretty much in two hundred miles in any direction. You know, it's it's definitely blossomed with their uh, cosplay, the live entertainment in the island, the tabletops, the PC gaming um the uh you know and then the competitions too now uh i mean they they're they do have a they had judging and what's unique for 2019 for us is they do have like judging as far as just by pure democratic methods of of votes you know um they have like multiple different uh uh uh, categories for awards that um they award to uh video games and and of course, they have the one that's called Best in Show, and that was the year that Galactic Battleground actually won uh, two awards. Uh, it won the best gameplay and the, and the best uh, game of show, which was quite quite an honor for us, really, because um, again, it's 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 not like three judges walking around and, and picking the games or something like that. It's actually just people going out and voting, you know, of the whole, you know, democratic style and, and saying, this is what I think is the winner, you know, and they just count the votes and give out the awards. It's, it was kind of, it was, it was just a very humbling experience to receive those, those two awards in a, in a, in a convention that's like you said, it's in our backyard and uh, uh, just made us, made us, made the experience just that much better. Um, and the other thing too was interesting too is, um, even though it was three years difference, there were people that came back and remembered us from when we had our little, uh, you know, TV and, and Apple TV uh, uh, demo from three years before. And this, and said, and it said, Hey, do you remember me? And I was like, yeah, I actually do remember you. Uh, you know, the, we had a, we had one person that played the game forever uh, in 2016. He came back and did the same again on, on 2019. It was awesome to, to see that, uh, people come back and remember us and, and still enjoy the game three years later. Uh, it's quite a humbling experience. 
Keanu. I remember meeting some guys that uh, were coders over at Activision that enjoyed playing the game, and that was always cool to to have guys that work on such big projects like Call of Duty tell us that they're enjoying playing the game. And I was able to, um, a few months ago, interview Kevin and Robert, um, who basically run the convention um, to a degree. There's more people involved, but they're they're definitely um, a big part of it. Um, we spoke mm-hmm. about what it was like to run a convention online and um, what it was like for 2020. And they're actually doing it again, I believe, this year, um, the end of August. Um, I believe it's going to be online. They haven't made an announcement yet. It is in person at this point in time, but we'll, well see what happens. On their website, it says register and says hotel information on their website for August 27th through the 29th. Um, so it looks like they're right now their their plan is to uh, uh, be at the their their venue there at the Hyatt in uh, downtown Minneapolis. Um, you know, pending any other pending any issues of course but uh it, right now that's their schedule that's their plan and uh, i hope to uh, be back there and uh, to demo some some new things uh for for that convention yeah definitely fingers crossed on that one because uh i'm i'm missing conventions the last time i went to was uh vgm con 2020 and that was the beginning of march so that was before everything started happening um, yeah i last guess when i went to was uh well the one we'll talk about at the end here but i don't know it's right. been a year and a half. Yeah, it's too long. Um, I guess the next one to talk about would be Midwest Gaming Classic. And yes. that one is based out of Milwaukee, which is a ton of fun. And we have met a ton of people at that one. So let's just start with 2018. That was the first year we took Galactic Battleground there. Um, yep. It had to have been our first, was it the second uh, model of our upright Konami? Yeah, we had a uh, we had the uh, uh, our prototype, which just never actually went to a convention. It went to a it went to a, a demo at uh, Up Down in Minneapolis, and still today sits at Can Can Wonderland. But um, this was our uh, this is where our cabinet first debuted at a convention ever, which was 2018 2D Con or not 2D Con, excuse me. Um, MGC and uh, we uh, this was the the first run of our production line uh, you know cabinet so Brian Artemidge designed the cabinet uh, made it more the Konami style and um, we took it there and we were blown away by what uh, we, we we didn't know what to expect and we didn't know how big it was we just Brian said we need to go to this convention we're like okay you know because we trust Brian because Brian's kind of like the godfather of arcade games and stuff like that. But um, he, uh, we went there, uh, the four of us, um, and the the number of people uh, was I don't I, if I was going to guess it was in the thou- it, was, it was in the thousands that went through there over a three day weekend, um, which is bigger than we ever experienced. Um, celebrities. Uh, there, um, we run into, uh, local and national celebrities, you know, so we went to, ran into Eugene Jarvis, uh, who played our game. Eugene Jarvis was a unique, unique fella. Uh, he came in and tried our game, but never introduced himself. Um, and I didn't even know it was him until he left. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's he, pretty funny that you were able to get a picture with him and then find out later on that it was him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the guy is like, you know who that was? Like, I don't know. And it was Eugene Jarvis. He played for 45 minutes and it was enjoying it. He, he just, he just played and, and it was, he, I, he wasn't really checking out the count. I guess he was checking out the competition, but he wasn't really like, he was just kind of seeing what it was like, you know, and wanted, wanted a full experience. And he, he didn't just sit there and play one game and say, this sucks. You know, he, he played, you know, multiple games with with four players too which is the best experience it was, you know, it, was it was interesting and he uh he was getting into it which was which was which was awesome too and then uh then we ran into uh billy mitchell too uh billy mitchell those that don't know is um uh, held records in classic arcade games like donkey kong and stuff like that and ran into some pr that changed that but uh we ran into him and uh he was the billy mitchell that you come to expect he was in this full-on white uh you know suit with the american flag tie and uh, 
uh, Brian knows Billy uh, fairly well too. And he asked him to come over and try that. And uh, Billy, myself, Dylan and Miles sat there and played uh, Galactic Background for at least an hour and a half. Uh, Cause it was at the end of the night, this was like in the MVP, MVP or VIP timing where it was only VIPs were allowed in the arcade after a certain time or the arcade area. Um, yeah, we played for like an hour and a half. It was, it was crazy. And, uh, he was really enjoying it. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of celebrities, um, Midwest gaming classic is, is, is really a celebration of games from across all generations too. That's what makes it unique. Uh, they have a lot of unique stuff at MGC. They, uh, every year they have like the DeLorean from back in the future, uh, on display, I think they they had a, the Ghostbusters uh, Echo One on display. I think they, they got the Jeep from uh, Jurassic Park as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have like stuff to look at. Uh, of course, all the vendors selling uh, uh, arcade specific stuff. Um, they also have kind of like the history of if if, if anything that ever had a, like a video game on it, whether it's computer or console or arcade it's there like the even like the apple 2e's with oregon trail and you know the Com- commodore 64s and anything that was a was a game they have like the whole history of video games you know uh, atari nintendo you know uh pretty much any video game that was ever conceived is pretty much there in some capacity for you to, to play you know if you if you like any type of video games, you'd, you'd find it there, you know, and that's what I think it makes it the most, most unique around the area. Cause you go to some other conventions and they have like, you know, a lot of different things, but Midwest gaming classic is they really, they do have, have the classic part of it too, where it's like, you can try it all. Like I almost, I almost, wa- I walked over there too. And I was considering like buying one of those computers out there. And <laughs> I'm probably glad I didn't cause I didn't know what I would do with it or anything like that. But it would have been, uh, you know, uh, no, it would have been a cool, cool thing to have in my, my collection, but, um, yeah, they, they have just have a very, a lot of, a lot of unique stuff. Um, they also, they also had, uh, you know, I think they had, they had like wrestlers, Ted DiBiase was there too, one time, um, with his WWE belt and stuff like that, or WWF at the time. And, um, pinballs there too. Uh, Stern has a big showing, uh, there as well. And they, uh, uh, have, have um, all of their salespeople out there and, and showing them off as well. It's pretty much the biggest uh, convention in the Midwest uh, that's closest to like an IAPA or a uh, amusement expo that you see on the coasts or, or West or East Coast and stuff like that, where this it's the only one unique in the area where it has like pretty much every you can think of and celebrities come out to see it and uh, you know, they're, they're, they, they take up the Wisconsin convention center, which is usually, you know, those, those things are huge. It's like you do like auto shows and uh, boat shows and those kind of things like that. And they're able to, they, they fill up their, their entire one, one entire, like, I guess, warehouse style with arcade games with, and they're all donated by collectors too. It's like, they don't like collectors come and bring in like, you know, 10 to 20 games, you know, just cause they want to show them off and stuff like that. Like rare games that you can't find them anywhere else too. You know, Brian, that's how Brian knows them. Um, it's run by a guy named Dan Lucen too. And he's might be a good one to get on the uh, show sometime too there. Joe is Dan Lucen's a great guy. He's, and he's also like Shauna from 2D kind a huge uh, uh, fan of indie arcades and, and, and helping indie arcades get 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 in in the door, you know, it's like a lot of these conventions are expensive. You know, they you you can get in you you, you can get in there, but you have to pay like, you know, thousands of, thousands of dollars just to get in. And and these guys, uh, I ha- tip my hat off to. They're not they're looking to help help out the little guy and stuff like that. And I can't thank them enough for letting us you know be at these conventions and uh, um, giving indie arcades. I, I like to stand on really and letting them kind of shine and, and, and help get them started. Yeah. I mean, on that, on that idea, it's, it's kind of, it seems like it's mutually beneficial. They have something really unique to show off that. I mean, when you look at a lot of these indie games, there's only a handful of places that you can even play them and you know, there's, they're not even in every state. So 
some of them you can only play in four or five states across the country. Um, I mean, granted, even in the world. But I think MG or uh, MGC really struck the perfect balance between promotions and just like fun. Like they they mm-hmm. have Stern and they have all these vendors and all these collectors come in and it's a really good way to promote a game and promote like the new Stern pinballs. But a lot of the other stuff is just in there. That's cool. Everything you can play. And actually a lot of the collector stuff is for sale. Like you'll walk around and pinballs will be for sale and old cabinets. And it's the kind of thing where you oh, can yeah. go check it out and play and be like, I really like this. I want to take it home. I almost walked away with a Pac-Man there too. The last, uh, in 2019, I was, I yeah. stared at it for a while and I asked Brian to look at it and, uh, I eventually I didn't buy it because I cooler heads prevailed, but uh, it was right there on the so edge. Attempt. Brian was so like, it's, "It's a decent deal, but like you can probably find better." Yeah, it, he pro- he kind of talked me down, which was good. That's why I I, I trust him, but it was I was so close to buying it, but I didn't. <laughs> thank God. And that was also the first year that we met all the other indie guys. So we met the Cosmotron guys, the Deathball guys, uh, or yeah. guy Tony. Um, we ended up meeting Dan from DSM Arcade who builds the cabinets for Switch and Shoot and he's done other independent projects and stuff too. So Yeah, that was a unique experience for us too because we didn't realize that we, we were not alone. Alone, you know, because we, we knew about Cosmotrons uh, of them and we didn't know how uh, popular they were uh, until we got there really. Uh, we get there and their booth is just amazing. You know, like they have their beautiful cabinets of course and they and their booth is like set up so so well, you know, and um, when we had our little indie arcade row uh, with uh, Death Ball and DSM and um, it, it was it was awesome. It was like, oh, my gosh, we're not the only ones making arcade games. What's that's crazy. You know, uh, you know, this is cool. And we, we and we knew about Killer Queen and we knew that exists, but this, this was just we were blown away like like wow we're, this is this is actually a thing that we can, we can get you know we had, and we a lot of uh, exchanging ideas and stuff it was it was also really cool too because we didn't like go in there and look at each other and like oh you're the competition kind of thing it was more like uh we we need to talk and like work together and and, and you know and talk about ideas and, and and how we can you know improve it and and be better as as the game developers and designers going forward and I mean, looking back on it, that was kind of the the original root of my, my whole idea with Indie Arcade Wave and just all of us working together. And it's just every convention, one after the next, has just added onto that ball of like that that snowball just kept rolling down the hill until it, it finally came to this. And I was like, I just I'm going to just do it and I'm going to get all these guys on here and we're all going to talk about it because. Mm-hmm. I mean that that was the biggest thing with the weekend is yeah we're playing the whole all these games and everything but like those the relationships that we built over those weekends were so cool like mm-hmm. the fact that we can just call up Tony and chat whenever like it, it's awesome that we all have that that connection now yeah yeah I mean we've even discussed you know possibly collabing on games and stuff like that someday and and we it's still an option you know that would it's still on the table at some time you know um, but uh, we all we're all just really passionate about arcade games and we, we do it, we, we do it cause we enjoy it, you know, and stuff like that. So um, it's, it was really a great experience meeting those guys in 2018. Yeah. So, I mean, we can talk about 2019 a little bit now and I'm actually, I'm looking up the numbers and it's kind of wild. So it, it looks like one of the first um, MGCs was in 2002. Um, they had an attendance of a hundred people. And then 2018, the first year that we went was 7,000, over mm-hmm. 7,000. And then 2019 was over 10,000. So yeah, that's, that's a sig- significant jump from 2018 to 2019. It is, yeah. And they did, they did, they did take up more space in the convention center too. So they took up a second up. room. So they yeah. doubled in size. Yeah, and they would have been even bigger too. Uh, 2020 didn't go the way it went. So, um, yeah, it, and to. 2020 or 2019 was interesting too because um you know 2018 we spent more getting to know the other indie guys and stuff like that but 2019 was more spending to get more other players outside of indie like we actually spent many hours with eugene jarvis in, in 2019 talking to him and talking about you know his game ideas and what ideas that he would do for our other games and stuff like that uh it was a really cool experience just to 
for lack of a better term, to meet the master, you know, with all the games he's done in, in over decades, you know, uh, just to even pick that guy's brain is really just an honor, you know. And, um, and then we talked to, and then we met other, um, you know, coin op people, uh, Chris Myers. Uh, we uh, met, uh, saw him again uh, there, and uh, he came out, you know, it just shows the draw of Midwest Gaming Classic, a guy that comes from the East Coast will drive out there to show off some game or show off, you know, what's what's happening and stuff like that. You know, guys, we had a guy that came up from Free Play Arcade that was, his mission was to, Free Play Arcade in uh, uh, Texas, I think. Yeah, down in uh, Texas. Yeah, he, his this guy came up and his mission was to find new games to, to possibly buy. And, 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 you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, you, like the, the 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 rumors of indie arcades coming to uh, Midwest and Game Classic is starting to get around too and stuff like that, which is a great great thing to have because you know that was only going to make the convention better, you know, for indie arcades going forward. And uh, it was it was quite quite awesome to see all the different uh, people that were just it, it was just felt like a more more of the people that are not indie arcade like developers but just interested in it in general and just trying to get to know us more and stuff like that and that was that that, that was that was great you know experience for us too as well as like because we were just more in shock and awe in 2018 and kind of just sitting there uh, with our spacesuits and our <laughs> you know our flight jackets and, and and promotions and now and 2019 was more like uh we were we knew what to expect and we were, came a little bit more prepared and and we're our sales pitches were down pat more and things like that. And uh, we actually had a big uh, update to the game too, to make the menu easier. So we didn't have to tell people what to do, which was nice. Cause we used to have to sit there and say, Oh no, you hit that button wrong. And you got to do this now to get out of it. And stuff like that. And it, it was the first time we debuted the menu system where it was like, Oh, it's so simple. We don't have to do anything. We can just let them play and it works. <laughs> yeah. That's been a really nice thing with conventions is we usually roll out like a, a new patch before we send it live to all the other cabinets and we have these people try it out, figure out what we like, what we don't like, and we can make a little update before we send it all out. And mm -hmm. that is, I mean, like you said, that's, that's really cool that it's become known in the community that indie games are going to be at MGC and we can go and show them off. And it, it felt more in 2019, like it was oh, less yeah. us working and trying to bring people in and they, they were just coming up. They were like, what's this? I heard something about, new games i want to try it tell me how to play and that that was just that was huge yeah it was it was it was awesome with that experience to have and i uh, can't wait to go back again yeah I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the next one so the last one i want to talk about for midwest conventions before we touch on a, another one that's a little bit different but uh that's Combo Breakers, which I unfortunately have not been able to attend yet. Um, I was very excited for it this year, and that got shut down. And then I had issues the other two years that just made made it unable to go. Um, and this one's a little different than what we've been talking about. It's not so focused on arcades and everything. This one is actually a fighting game tournament. Yeah. Um, and it's the biggest one in the Midwest. I think their, their slogan is something like, uh, no coast, no kings. Yep. Um, so everyone comes into the convention, no matter where you're ranked in the professional ra uh, brackets, you just, you're there. You just play with the general mm -hmm. population for the whole tournament until you reach the end, which obviously you have an idea of who's going to make it to the end, but it, it must be pretty cool to play with these people that are, I mean, amongst the best in the country, even the world. Um, you might get your ass beat real bad, but it's cool to even have played with them. So what, what was your, your time in 2018? Like, uh, 2018 was, it was, uh, unique cause we did, again, we didn't know what to expect going down there. It was another, uh, brainchild of Brian, uh, Brian and paradise arcade go are the, have a major presence at this convention because they sell a ton of arcade parts, uh, uh, to this for their, for people's fight sticks. So take a step back for a second. So yeah, it's the biggest fighting convention arcade convention in the midwest um and by fighting it's your two-dimensional or even three-dimensional i guess uh one-on-one -on -one fighting games like your mortal combats your street fighters uh of the world and um people generally bring uh their own joystick uh what they, what they call their own fight stick it's they're kind of similar to um 
I don't know if you remember the old Nintendo, big Nintendo 8-bit joystick, which was huge. Like they made the original controllers Nintendo, but the the, the Nintendo, uh, I want to say Joy-Con, but I don't think that's right either. But it's a bigger stick, which just, it just had a, you know, a, a arcade-like stick uh, with ball on the top and then two red buttons for A and B and a select start kind of thing. But they're huge. It's meant for, you know, more space. And people walk around the convention, everyone's carrying these, these fight sticks because they, they, they are, they, they, they basically are USB fight sticks and they plug into uh, these consoles and just fight people and go in tournaments for you know, all the different games. You know, they have all the different versions of Street Fighter from Street Fighter 2 to Street Fighter th- uh, 4, I think it is. And then two different Mortal Kombat, uh, Injustice League, uh, Dragon Ball Z, um to name a few and there's there's i think there's actually like 12 different games total that they they do and um uh and they do uh even some of the games like um uh the nintendo one brawler smash brothers they do that as well yeah yeah and uh um it's it's very intense it's it's like the esports arena for uh uh fight games and uh it was very unique because we didn't know what to expect. And Brian was like, your game has potential to be one of these kind of games to do that, where it's kind of this fighting uh, mentality where you, you can have ranks. And uh, we brought our, we brought our games in there and uh, they had at the time, it was only just a small arcade section. Um, Brian brought about, I want to say he brought 20 arcade games. I'd probably must some recording this, and maybe it's probably more like 30. We brought two Galactic Ragon cabinets, and then we brought uh, he brought his um, his candy arcades too, the, the little Japanese um, sit down ones. Candy cabs. And candy cabs, yeah. And uh, uh, we were there, uh, and it was just a different experience because everybody's there. You hear the roar of the crowd when somebody does this sweet combo. Um, you know, everybody's relying on their, the, the only reason why they bring their joysticks because every microsecond counts on like doing that counter around that right time and stuff like that. Um, you just know how you feel when you're playing your own joystick and stuff. And uh, we, we ran a tournament uh, there uh, with our two cabinets. We had, uh, I think, 30 people sign up. Uh, we gave away some uh, a, a, a gift from Paradise Arcade that they donated to us. And uh, uh, it was great. Oh, we um, we live streamed the championship game, and the championship game was even more interesting too because of the way it worked out. Like it was like a it was like one team was ahead two to nothing, and the other team came back to to three two. And the final final ending was was unique too because if I'm trying to remember, it served it was like the guys were ahead two to one, and uh, that's when the, that's right when we put in the revive uh, option into the game. So um, the guy got lucky and got the mystery box. He was down two. Sh- he was by himself, a, a two against one. He got the revive to get his partner back. His partner hits the, hits the other mystery box, gets the laser, and just clears out the other team. And there was a two to one switch in like five seconds or, or less. It was so quick, and it was it was crazy because we we had one of those oh moments where like everybody was trying to look at us, you know, like. That was that was that was intense, and uh, you know, we handed out T-shirts, and all the guys that were there were wearing their Galactic Background T-shirts, what they got from the day before, and stuff like that. So promotions, and uh, it it was a, it was experience. And then, I mean, Dylan, it was Dylan and I. And we went down there. Uh, it was in St. Charles, uh, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. Um, it's held every year on Memorial Day weekend, and uh, we weren't sure what to expect, and and we we spent more time trying to look at games and trying to advertise for ourselves. Cause it was just, it was just so cool. You know, the people to, to see people playing at, at that level that we didn't even really know existed, you know, like these guys are, are basically the best in the nation and, uh, and in the world. Cause people travel from, you know, foreign countries to come to this tournament, you know, Japan, UK, China, I mean, it's, it's intense. It's crazy. Um, you know, and I, I would sit there, you know, like, oh, I used to play Street Fighter back in the day. I'll sit down and, and, and play and I just get destroyed. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I I thought I was good at, you know, Chun-Li or something like that. And, and they just 
they just mop me up. And then they would, then, and then, and then they would tell me, oh, here's what you did wrong. You know, I'm like, Oh, thanks. I, I appreciate that. You know? And, um, it was crazy. And so, I mean, the 2018 was just us kind of, you know, again, the, kind of like the wide eyed and just kind of just t- taking it all in. And then I went back 2019 uh, by myself, actually, unfortunately, uh, nobody can make it except me that weekend. And holiday weekends can always be tricky and stuff like that. You know? So, um, I was able to go again and, um, it was, uh, it was different because we, the arcade was in a little more side, uh, uh, area. So people had to find it and stuff like that. But, uh, another thing that was humbling is it got, so each year, uh, uh, Conway Breakers has their highlight game or their main event game. Uh, 2018, it was Dragon Ball Z because that just came out for PlayStation and Xbox. And then the year after that was the brand new Mortal Kombat game. Um, I think it's Mortal Kombat 10, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, uh, we we sat there and watched the I I know we I sat there and watched the finals and I got this tweet from a guy that uh, says hey he was in the top uh, eight for the Mortal Kombat and he tweeted out saying I'm I lost I'm gonna go play some some Galactic Battleground now I was like oh my god that's awesome <laughs> so like a guy that's like the top of his game in Mortal Kombat you know you know with all those precision moves that you have to do to be so good in counters and, and attacks and offensive and defensive. And he wants to go play the art, you know, galactic battleground. And, and it's cause he's, he, he just realized it was at the convention again. So another humbling experience for us and stuff like that, but it's a good way to get exposure and, and it's a very unique convention. And I, and if you have any interest in the fighting games at all, it's, it's worth the drive if you're in the, in, in the Midwest area, uh, Unfortunately, they already know that they're not going to have it this year, but um, 2022, be watching for that Memorial Day weekend. At, at your website is uh, combobreaker.org. And um, it's such an amazing experience to see these people just being cheered. So you feel like you're at a Super Bowl almost, but like the Super Bowl of, you know, fighting games. And it's 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 one of my favorite conventions to go to uh, of all the ones I go to. It's it's just it's just no other way, no other place describes it. I mean, I'm sure they have the, you know, the coast ones like that, but with it being the Midwest and being so close, it's, it's really, really amazing experience to, to witness. And you, you just have to be there to see it. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm definitely excited to finally make it out there. I'm not missing it this time. It's not happening. I'm, I will be making it once it comes back. And I guess the last convention that I wanted to mention, we already talked about the ones in the Midwest, but I just want to bring this one up because it's so big in the indie scene and this last year that they had it like it really flipped and it really, really turned into such a big thing for the indie scene. And that is Bumble Bash. So um, I know mm-hmm. I've had a bunch of people on here talking about it. I think I talked to Chaco about it and Belia about it and Nikita about it. And I might've even talked to Tony about it. Um, mm-hmm. And Bumble Bash Joe, 4, right? Yeah, well, even, I mean, all of them. So the, mm-hmm. the first one they had in, in Texas, I, I'm blanking. I think the second one was in Minneapolis. The third one was somewhere. And then Bumble Bash 4 was in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I think the third and, one was in Oregon. Yeah, that, that's what it is. And I think the fourth one is where everything really flipped because it went from being just about Killer Queen to being about Killer Queen and all the indies. So this was the first year that they had us collect battleground there they had death ball they had cosmotrons they had armed and gelatinous they had switch and shoot they had um why do i feel like i'm missing one oh black emperor um yeah, yeah. so all those all those games were there and then i mean there had to have been 10 sets of killer queen cabinets they were all over this place mm-hmm. and it was just such a cool weekend to hang out with all these people and the killer queen community to see all these other indie games that are coming up and just the support that we got from bumble bear was incredible um absolutely they they had tournaments for every game and uh switch and shoot was a little different so they had a, a high score running for the whole weekend i think the winner ended up playing for like 45 minutes straight or something and i i don't think i can last more than oh a God. minute and a half the game is so yeah. difficult um, yeah but that one just it really changed i feel i feel like it changed the game for me for conventions it it did. I mean, it, it was another unique experience that we've never experienced everywhere, anywhere before, as far as just being an indie focused only convention, you know, like this is, it was very um, 
awesome to that to them to embrace to embrace other indies along with them because they could they could very easily be like no we're it's just killer queen and that's it you know they they had no reason to like invite us along and um i i honestly believe they think that our games are uh, are fun and enjoyable and um and uh, they think that bumble bash could turn into more than uh just about killer queen it can turn out to be the world championship of all these games you know like like combo burger 4 it has basically the the big tournaments of all these games uh that are fighting games and bumble bash could be the same thing where they have the tournaments for all the indie games you know um it it is it is it, it was basically on the cusp of like okay the next time this happens it's going to be bigger and now these people that were just experienced these games like galactic battleground cosmotrons you know death ball arms Linus, are going to come back and look for it you know and that's how it builds and that's how the message builds and uh it it's quite the experience to have basically indie only because there was like no other arcade games whatsoever and it was very humbling to be amongst, amongst such great creators uh again like we've been, we've seen them before in other venues but just all of us there in one spot and and just playing games and playing the playing the games that we made you know it was it's crazy and um uh the way that uh, the, the the competitiveness of all those people was was real too and when they came in there and they brought that competitiveness to our to our games too and stuff like that so um i'm looking forward to working with those guys you know more cuz they, they 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 definitely want to embrace us and and, and want us to be you know, part of the, part of the scene as well. And I think they're, that's a wise move on their part and uh, we can only get stronger together. And uh, once this, you know, the next one opens up, I think it's We're going to have, have an even bigger presence um, with our indie uh, games and, and hopefully even more games, you know, spring up, which will, which would be great. Yeah. And I mean, I just want to give a shout out to everybody that was a part of that. I mean, obviously like Nikita, um, and Josh, the guys mm. behind Bubble Bear, and Jamal was helping out, and Belia, mm. yep. um, and Chaco, and I mean, there's there's too many people to name, honestly. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, that was that was so much fun, and I mean, yeah. thank you, Chris, too, for bringing a whole. I mean, I know oh, yeah, he absolutely. brought like four games down, four of the indie games from West Virginia. He brought them out, so yeah, that convention was really crazy too for me because you know, I mean. It's, small side story too is like i literally uh so they like i literally got off a plane off a of red eye from vegas because i was in vegas the, the week before the convention for my brother-in-law's wedding and i landed at 6 a.m got in a car and drove to chattanooga to get there uh and then when i and got that's, there that's a solid I, like 14 hour drive yeah, it's a 14-hour drive from Minneapolis there, and I, I, when I got there, I uploaded a patch to the game because I wanted to test something. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sitting there. I got there. It was I don't know, it was like 11 p.m. or, or I was actually a little more before that, but um, it was like it's 8 p.m. when I was uploading a patch to our games because I wanted to make have people try this this thing and stuff like that that I was working on and stuff like that. Totally crazy. I probably never do it again, but I wanted to be down there so bad, and I but I couldn't like miss my brother-in-law's wedding, you know, so, um, quite the, uh, experience. My wife was like, you're nuts. Like you just, you know, slept like four hours, maybe total in the last, you know, I'm like, yep, yeah, well I'm going. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. And I mean, we definitely stayed up until like three o'clock that night, went to sleep and then got up the next morning at like eight or nine, like, and just did it again. And it was, it was so cool to see everybody out there and play all the games and just, it it had such a relaxed atmosphere. Like yeah. I got to explore the city. It was my first time ever in Tennessee and Chattanooga is fantastic. Like, oh, Chattanooga is beautiful. Highly too. recommend. Yep. It's, it's a, it's a great city and they couldn't find a bet. That, that was a great venue there um, that they had. So someday I'll go back there even when it's not a uh, convention for sure. It's a great place. Yeah. Well, I mean that, that pretty much wraps it up for what we wanted to talk about for conventions. And I just want to thank everybody that has been a part of these conventions and helped create these memories for us and helped us out with promoting the game. Um, there are other yeah. conventions we went to too, but these ones just, I don't know, these ones really stick with me just cause they're, they're close to home. And I think I drove to all of them. I mean, mm-hmm. a little different than a flight. Um, yep. 
and conventions are coming back. I mean, you know, right now, unfortunately, we can't go to like rock concerts or or, or conventions or or major sporting events. But you know, a lot of these a lot of these conventions are are making plans for the fall and winter of 2021, and uh, looking forward to that to relive making more memories with these conventions coming up. Yeah, we will be back to all of the conventions that we mentioned and more, hopefully in the coming year. Um, and I just want to thank you, Kelly, for coming on here. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, of course. So before I wrap it up, I just want to remind everybody, if you like what we're doing here, it really helps us if you subscribe, like, share the podcast, um, let your friends know about it, let other devs know about it. Um, and we will be back next Friday. Um, can't quite tell you what the subject is going to be yet. It's a, it's a secret. So you'll find out when you come back. But um, until next time, peace.